Hello there my fellow Notebook Gamers and welcome back to the channel. This is the 2023 Razer Blade 14 and the portable powerhouse has been refreshed across the board both internally and to some extent externally as well. In typical Razer fashion this puppy feels amazing, looks amazing and packs quite a punch for such a small notebook. But it's not the only powerful 14 inch notebook on the market and especially the infamous LG G14 is lurking behind every corner when we review the newest addition to Razer's Blade family. So let's see if the stealthy matte black gaming machine is able to bring enough unique features to the table to justify the higher cost compared to the competition. In stark contrast to the LG G14, the blade comes only in two configurations, with your choice of either an RTX 4060 or RTX 4070 running at a maximum TGP of 130 watts. The 14 incher is always powered by the AMD Ryzen 9 7940HS and comes with a new 16x10 240Hz QHD display. As a first for the series, you can now choose between 16 or 32 gigs of RAM, and our sample had 1 terabyte of room for your favorite games and applications. Speaking of cost, our review config for the Plate 14 will set you back $2700 or €3200, whereas a similarly equipped G14 will be around $1850 or €3000. If you put both the G14 and the plate side by side, it is a really tough decision which one gets the upper hand when it comes to design and overall build quality. Both machines are subtle in their overall design language, but of course the Razer does look the tiny bit cleaner thanks to its overall sharper angles, whereas the G14 feels quite a bit better thanks to more rounded edges around the main chassis area. It is also quite a bit lighter than the Razer, but a few millimeters thicker. For me personally it is a really tough decision to pick a winner here, but I would say you cannot really go wrong with either of these. And it will come down to your personal preference which one you prefer. In terms of connectivity, both laptops do not really help us make a decision here, since, well, they offer almost exactly the same amount and variety of ports. I personally prefer the Razer's layout, since if you utilize all USB ports on the right side of the G14, it can get quite a bit crammed and if you use bigger connectors, you will block the adjacent ports really quickly. The G14 does have a slight edge though with the inclusion of a micro SD card reader. For your next game downloads over the air, the RG can score a win with faster transfers, but both 14 inches provide a stable connection overall. To stay in contact with your loved ones, both laptops provide only average image quality for their respective webcams. For future generations, we would definitely hope for some improvements in this regard. While the 2022 Razer Blade 14 was limited to a mere 16 gigs of system memory, Razer went all in for this year and added two SODEM slots for a maximum of 64 gigs of user exchangeable RAM. The G14 in comparison only goes halfway, with 16 gigs soldered to the motherboard, and only one SODEM for a max memory config of 48 gigs. When it comes to inputs, I personally prefer the ROG, since it simply offers more travel, feedback and tactility. That said, the Razer is not bad per se, but it lacks the more pronounced pressure point of the G14's keyboard. The layout of the ASUS is also a little less cramped than the plates, so if you type a lot in between gaming sessions, you might feel a little more comfortable with the G14. Both touchpads are spacious with satisfying clicks, but this time the Plate 14 can edge out the ROG offering by a little bit with a slightly more premium feel and larger surface area. Before we get to the performance differences and benefits for each of these, let's have a look at the display situation. Right off the bat, the Plate 14 is at a serious disadvantage since it is very hard for any notebook to compete with the G14's stellar mini LED panel that simply excels on every level. For more details about the RG's visual experience, please check out our full review. The Razer's panel is still a very good display though for both gamers and creators or casually use in general. In addition to very solid brightness results, it can still hold its own with very good measurements across the board. Speaking of content creators, ASUS excels with great software support for their displays, and the addition of factory calibrated profiles gives it the edge once more, since those options are missing completely in Razer's Synapse software. Unfortunately, the Blade 14 is not even calibrated from the factory, which is quite a shame since it delivers professional grade color reproduction after all manual calibration. If you own a Plate 14 yourself, please feel free to head on over to our written review to download our ICC profile if you do not have access to calibration equipment. 
One key advantage of the razor blade is the absence of PWM. While the frequency for the G14 was quite high, so it will most likely not cause problems even if you are sensitive towards it, if you are concerned about any potential harm from your gaming notebook's display, the blade will give you peace of mind. In the gaming department the blade has a slight edge as well with faster response times for both of our grey to grey and black to white measurements. But let us finally get to what is under the hood for the blade and how it fares to the ROG G40. Both 14 inches are equipped with AMD's latest Zen 4 7940HS. The 8 core 16 thread CPU can rely on up to 80 watts consistently and performs pretty much on par and without any throttling with ASUS this offering. In our performance rating, a combined score out of several different benchmarks with both single and multi-core tests, the new Ryzen chip is pretty well positioned between both the in-house and Intel competition. As we have seen in the G14 already, it cannot quite keep up with the high-end HX chips, like the AMD 7945HX or something along the lines of an Intel i9-13980HX. But considering the small chassis and the still very respectable CPU-only performance, the efficiency-focused HS chip is a great fit for a gaming laptop. System performance is impressive for both machines, if not directly comparable. While last year's Blade 14 was able to be specced with an RTX 3080 Ti, the Blade tops out with an RTX 4070 this year, while the direct competition, the RG G14, can be yours with an RTX 4090. If you want to dive deeper into our benchmarks and results, please check out our written review. My colleague Alan did all the testing for the Blade 14, so please give his article a read. In our 3 Mark rating, a once more combined score out of 3 Mark 11, 3 Mark Time Spy, Fire Strike, Speedway and Port Royal, the Blade performs admirably compared to other RTX 4070 equipped notebooks. While the mid-range ADA chip does not really scale that well with power limits above 100 watts, the Blade can almost keep up with the Legion Pro 5, a much larger and heavier notebook. The G14's 4090 might just get about 125 watts of juice. But Nvidia's mobile flagship is just an entirely different beast. And by the way, let us know if you guys would be interested in a review update for the G14 with an RTX 4060 or 4070. Maybe we can get a sample for that one as well. If you are a creator that travels a lot and are not locked within the Apple ecosystem, you might have already looked at either of these two. And for good reason. The unique combination of well-made but small chassis, great displays and powerful performance would be a great fit for video editors, photographers, retouchers, graphic designers and everybody else that needs a powerful system in a small package. In our Blender benchmarks, both systems are able to back up their content creation prowess with solid numbers. The Blade performs within the average 404070, while the G14 can hold its own against much, much larger RTX 4090 laptops. I also use both machines for our video production in Resolve, and while timeline performance leaves not a lot to be desired with our Blackmagic 6K RAW files, export times are of course faster on the G14. But enough about work, let's play some video games. In our 1080p rating, the Blade performs below average for 4070 laptops. Especially notebooks with faster CPUs can score significantly better in those tests, since the games we are testing here are usually more CPU bound than GPU bottleneck. This also explains the relatively weak placement for the G14. So if you are playing a lot of competitive shooters, the performance differences will not be as significant. In general, the RTX 4070 in the Razer is still a pretty good fit for the QHD display and delivers smooth gaming with 60 FPS in almost all but the most demanding titles. For faster games, you can bring things down to 1080p for the competitive edge and in some titles, even 4K gaming is possible. For an additional boost, you can also take advantage of DLSS or frame generation. As always, to give you guys a general impression about what to expect from the Razer Blade 14, we tested a selection of games in Full HD, QHD and 4K. When you are doing undemanding tasks, you will hardly ever hear the fans of the Blade 14. But unfortunately, it does not perform as well as last year's version, which impressed us with very silent fans during gaming. We took some noise samples with different power levels and across several usage scenarios and I also added the G14 for a direct comparison. As in most of our recent videos, I also added a quick test for the speakers.
Again, if you want to dive deeper into the stress test and temperature behavior for the Blade 14, please follow the links to our written reviews in the description below. Away from the wall, the Blade 14 can score a win against the G14, despite having to rely on a much smaller battery. In this regard, the power-hungry mini-LED panel of the RG is definitely a disadvantage for users looking for longer battery runtimes. The difference is not quite night and day, and overall, both systems provide an okayish performance to battery life compromise. Alright, my fellow gamers, it is time to wrap it up for today. During our livestream we did on the Blade launch, a lot of you guys asked me which one of these I would recommend. I must admit, I'm still a little torn, but while the Blade 14 is a capable system that looks and feels simply stunning, the RG has a lot of real-world benefits at its side. While it feels very weird to say that an ROG device is the more affordable option, it holds true for a similar config of the G14 compared to the Blade, so the Razer Tax is definitely a thing. In addition, I'm a big fan of the ROG's display. The Blade screen is definitely a very, very good panel, it's just that the mini-LED display is simply better almost across the board. CPU performance does not really tip the scale in any direction either, but considering that you can get a G14 with an RTX 4080 SKU for the same price as the RTX 4070 SKU of the Blade, for those of you looking for the most gaming grunt per dollar, well, get the G14. If you are however looking for a super clean, stealthy gaming or workstation hybrid and simply prefer the Razer aesthetic and do not mind the premium you have to pay for it, this is not a bad laptop at all. It is very, very far from it and you will definitely have a great time with this one. But please folks, I am very interested to hear what you have to say. Please let me know in the comments whichever one of these two would be your preferred pick. This shall be it for today. If you liked our comparison, please feel free to like this video and since a lot of you guys watching our videos are not yet subscribed, I would kindly ask you to rectify that situation on your way out. It really helps us tremendously. If you cannot get enough of all things tech and laptops, check out some of our other videos, head over to our website or maybe even follow us on the gram. I have linked everything down below. But enough for now, thanks a ton for watching. My name is Alex, you have been fantastic and I cannot wait to see you all in the next one. Take care.